Welcome to day one of the His Word series that is memorizing Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 through 17 and I am using the New Living Translation uh, not because I think that one translation has it down uh, just is always the right one um, so you can choose whichever translation you would prefer uh, but this is the one that I'll be using for this particular passage of scripture. Day one, the only thing we need to think about is the very first phrase in verse 14 that says, when I think of all this. So we are moving through this passage of scripture one bite-sized chunk at a time firstly with the approach of meditating on these words. So throughout the day, I have that phrase, when I think of all this, when I think of all this, and it's going through my mind and I'm bringing my mind back to it as much as possible. And I'm doing it prayerfully saying, what what do these words mean to me? How can the Holy Spirit speak to me through these words? How can God bring revelation and connect to me and, and I to him through these words? So a little bit of context, because that phrase alone doesn't give us much to go on when I think of all this. So what kind of comes around that phrase to give it some substance is the reality that Paul is writing this particular passage as a response to what has already come in Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2, in the beginning of chapter 3, where he is expounding in incredibly profound and radiant ways about the mystery of the church, who we are in Christ Jesus, that we have been given every spiritual blessing under heaven, that we've been chosen by God, that we've been brought into adoption with him, that we are made new creations in Christ Jesus and seated with him in heavenly places that God has drawn those of us who were far. He has drawn us near into his presence. And he goes on to describe these mysterious purposes that are at work in this grandiose, big picture um, snapshot of what is happening as we are living in Christ while we are also living here on this earth and how God by his spirit through the saving work the gospel of Jesus Christ is uniting and drawing together we are participating in this recreation work that will unite heaven and earth. Sometimes, you know, we think we've, we've been taught about looking forward to eternal life, that we get through this life and we die and then we go to heaven. But there's this mysterious um, kind of swirling idea in these, these pages of scripture, these verses, that is this incredible, um, this picture that is more than just we leave, we die on this earth and we go to heaven, but that God is uniting both that the ultimate goal is that we get to, we get, there's a new earth, there's a new heaven and a new earth that live in a mutual reality. Whereas right now we have these separate realities. We have one foot in an earthly reality and then one foot in a spiritual kingdom of heaven reality. But Jesus has taught us to pray, let your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And he desires, he's drawing things to this place of restoration, drawing us into peace. The, the dividing walls have come down and he's, this blood of Jesus is not just 
saving me. It's trying to bring the whole world into restoration so that actually heaven and earth dwell in unity together in one reality together. And uh, this is the mystery of the church. We become this transition point, this intersecting point where God in this kingdom of heaven is being manifested and working within the people of this earth and of this world. So Paul in Ephesians is is writing about the mystery of the church and he's casting vision. He's saying, God gave me vision and insight and understanding into the mystery of these things more than anyone in any previous generation has been told um, or, or given insight into by the Holy Spirit. So Paul is stewarding these this grace that has been given to him to launch the church. And Ephesians, though it's called Ephesians, it's often said that maybe that title was added later, that it was written actually not to one specific church, but this book in particular can relate to any church. It is the global church. It is the big C church. This is who we are as the people of God, and it is a grandiose vision full of mystery and power and purpose and mission. So, when I think of all this, Paul says, and the passage that we will move into and move through these next many days is a response to all that has come before, is a response to this incredibly grandiose idea of what God calls the church, who we are, the potential that we have in Christ Jesus and the way that we are participating in literally recreating and changing the world by the blood and power of Jesus Christ to the point that we are able to see things restored in a way that only God can do and only he can see and only he can comprehend all the great mysteries of what that entails. So our phrase for today is when I think of all this, and it is Paul almost maybe overwhelmed by what God has revealed to him as the mystery of the church and the people of God as we exist in Christ Jesus. So when I think of all this, when I think of all this, I hope that that phrase will stir up your spirit and that God will bring new vision and insight and understanding into you this day about who you are in Christ, what it means to be a part of the kingdom of God here on this earth. I pray that your mind will come to a new place of awe and wonder as you consider what this thing we call salvation actually is, what this thing called faith actually is, who this one that we call Jesus, the Son of God, actually is and what he is capable of, what is possible in him. I pray that your spirit would be stirred to this place of awe and that like Paul, we would just, when I think of all this, and we will see tomorrow what comes next in this incredible passage of scripture that I am so excited to dig into with you. But may the Holy Spirit be speaking to you today as you consider, as you think of all this that is the mystery of Christ Jesus in the church that is us, the people of the living God. Bless you.